y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All coming to you from the North Georgia mountains. We are taking a very quick trip before school starts back up again for uh, for Hayden, for our son, and for me as well. Next week, very few days. Anyway, I set up for this thing, and right behind me is Mount Yona, which is absolutely beautiful, but the Smoky Mountains are earning their name right now by being smoky. So you can't see, so hopefully during the course of me talking, we will actually get to see some mountains appear in the background. Anyway, I want to talk about this little... Uh, tweet from Elon Musk from just a few hours ago as I record this. He's responding to Holmar's catalog who says Tesla needs to release the latest version of full self-driving to everyone so more people can see how good it is. So if you don't know, currently you have to subscribe, you have to purchase you know, full self-driving, whatever it is, you don't get it for free. I have been a very big proponent of having full self-driving be available, like with Hertz specifically. I think that what they should do is they should release full self-driving optionally so that you can check it, you know, and obviously agree to all this stuff, but that as you rent the vehicle, you can actually test out full self-driving with the rental. Just from a selfish standpoint, it would be lovely for me to be able to drive with it because I'm used to it. And when I get into a rental car and only have a navigate on autopilot, it's kind of a, it's annoying. It's whatever. It works fine. And Navigate on Autopilot, honestly, is still really, really good. It's amazing what it does. It lane keeps and it does traffic aware cruise control so it won't hit cars in front of you and stuff. But compared to full self-driving, it's really not in the same ballpark. Anyway, I think that what they should do is they, Tesla should, should just give that to the fleet and call it a tax loss or something, a tax write-off. Essentially, it's marketing. Uh, because when people then rent the car and go like, wow, I really, really love full self-driving, then when they go and purchase a Tesla later on, because butts in seats definitely sells Teslas, they will be much more likely to either subscribe to or purchase full self-driving. So I think it's actually a wise idea on Tesla's part, not even a, a loss leader, honestly. But anyway, at the very least, I think when people purchase the vehicle, they should get 30 days full self-driving trial for free. That should just be something that comes along with it. Or alternatively, maybe even better, what they do is after one month, they give you the full self-driving trial so that you actually have to try it first. You learn how to drive the car normally and you spend a month getting used to the car. And then, so if you buy it like August 1st on September 1st, they give it to you for the month of September. And then you actually can test it out yourself and you're like, like, oh, I see. So that you get used to the car, you get used to driving it without it, then you get it and you're like, okay, I see. And then, you know, when they take it away again, you're much more likely to go like, yeah, okay, fine. I'll throw the extra 200 bucks in a month or something. Anyway, so that's what Holmar's catalog is talking about here. He's talking about giving it to everybody so people have a chance to see how profoundly good it is. If you doubt it, the car drove us here yesterday, right? It, the, the, the Model Y is just like sitting over there in the, in the little parking circle in front of this uh, Airbnb house, which by the way is beautiful. It's got a fantastic view when the clouds aren't there of Mount Yona. And uh, it, it drove us here, right? It, it went from the house and it got on the highway. It drove on the highway. We did take a detour to Walmart at some point in commerce and went out. So right, I drove it at that point, but then got back on the road and it took back over again. It drove the windy mountain roads. It drove up this kind of access road up into this neighborhood which is very it's got some gravel it's got some really crappy roads it's very windy it's very very steep the car did fantastic that's the kind of thing that people need to understand is that this is not some sort of competition to like cruise or super cruise or ultra super duper cruise or whatever it is that they're calling it on the Celestique. It's not competition to that. This thing is so far ahead of that. It's going to, it, it would blow people's minds if they actually gave it a, a chance. And, and by the way, a shout out to Farzad and to Brandon from Car Questions Answered. I, I was watching their video yesterday while I was at the gym and I, I got a shout out on that about doing that first test drive with Brandon. And if you haven't seen that video, you should definitely check it out up here. It's a lot of fun, but his, his response to that was love the car really understands why people want to drive electric cars at this point but he's still concerned about full self-driving and to, to you know to his credit he drove it all of like an hour an hour and a half something like that so it wasn't a lot of time that he got to spend which is the reason why i think that tesla should allow people to have full self-driving beta for like a month for free to test it out. It takes a little while. You have to get used to it. It's not the kind of thing where you just immediately are willing to just take your hands off the wheel. No, I know you have to touch the wheel, but I'm metaphorically taking your hands off the wheel and allowing the car to drive you. It's something that you have to get used to over time. So I think a month is a good amount of time. 
Anywho, in response to all of this stuff, in response to Holmars posting this thing, Elon said, you mean 11.4.7? That should be going wide release within a week. So 11.4.6, it, it appeared and then nobody got it. So there must have been something wrong with 11.4.6. But 4.7 is probably something where they've adjusted things. I don't know if 11.4.20 is com going to come out eventually that that was supposed to be a big release but it sounds like they might be going more all in with version 12 which here is the interesting part version 12 which is an almost total rewrite 99 percent ai is being tested by our quality assurance drivers too much new code to go to the public yet but it is mind-blowing in my opinion so elon has said mind-blowing before but he did say that he was driving an alpha build of version 12 previously and his mind was blown so that's the second time he's used that i think maybe the third time in reference to version 12 of the software and I think that you know we're talking about a situation where he is extremely excited about this we're also talking about a version of the software that is a whole rewrite which again is another data point that I will add to the list of data points that makes me believe that Tesla is now gamified they've gamified learning how to do full self-driving they've sort of got a full self-driving agent and it's using an end-to-end -end world model with the potential of a large language model in the the chain of things that's part of this software so i don't know that that may be too much for this version 12 but it sounds like that's exactly what we're talking about is some sort of agent system just like DeepMind did with uh, alpha go where the where the computer learned to play itself the neural network played itself over and over again millions billions of times and learned how to play go better than any human being we could be looking at that same situation that Elon Musk is talking about here where the car is going to now be able to learn to drive on its own. It needs the data from the fleet to give it some ground truth reference, but it also has the capability to construct its own reality and to learn to drive on its own. So it's able to do things. We saw that in the CVPR presentations. If you haven't watched those videos, you should definitely watch those. Phil and Ashok, they go into some detail about this, but then they also say, we can't talk about this. So I, I believe what's happening Happening here is that they're really throwing away the old code version 11 is going to seem very very old now when version 12 comes out we're, we're then going to get the consequence of you know two steps forward one step back there's going to be weird things that version 12 does that version 11 didn't do because version 11 had been refined to some extent over all these point releases so that's going to happen so people just need to understand that but one of the reasons I think that we still are seeing weird things like lane change behavior and the stop sign behavior, things like that that are still annoying in 11.4.x is that, you know, Tesla has moved beyond that now. They are more interested in, in creating this new software, this new completely end-to-end -end AI thing. Probably when he talks about 99% AI code, number one, remember that I, I talked about this too, on to, <laughs> reference to another video, but the, the compression from 300,000 lines of code down to 3,000 lines of code for the output control is the kind of thing you get with neural network architecture. So when he's talking about 99% AI code, we're not just talking about one-to-one -one replacement of hard code, old heuristic versions of things in C++ and C moving over to neural network architecture. We're also talking about a massive compression that happens at the same time. And probably the 1% that's left is just some glue that glues these things together. So more than likely, they will never get to 100% because more than likely, it's got to do like this. And then it's got to do some data transfers and things like that, which would be more traditional hard code. And then it can move to the next step. And then it's using, you know, neural network architecture. And then it gets to there and it has to do some glue that like does some more data transfer and things. So more than likely, I don't know, I could be wrong about this, but more than likely, we're talking 99% is as much as it will ever get to end to end. But that's that is close enough. Basically, that stuff in between is just some glue that just attaches all these pieces together. But my conviction here is that when we see this software and when we get to AI day number three and we get people able to talk about this in more detail from Tesla, the engineers, when they do their big event sometime this fall, we're going to be told about a profoundly different architecture that is not the same. They learned, right? They couldn't, they couldn't just make this out of nothing. They had to get these neural network architectures into the right condition before they could move to the next step. But this next step is like really just throwing away the old architecture and starting starting with a clean slate with understanding how to do this and then training it up 
to a condition where it is going to be profoundly better than human drivers. I think we're talking, we're going to get to that with version 12, assuming that all of this is correct. That's where we're going to get to this, you know, four or five times safer than a human driver with version three of the hardware and potentially up to 10 times safer than a human driver with version four of the software. And of course, this is something that's currently being tested by the employees at Tesla, and there's going to be a lot of tests since it's all new code because this is, you know, it's safety critical kind of stuff. So it's going to take a while to get to us, but when it gets to us consumers, us beta testers, it is going to probably knock people's socks off. This is when the chat GPT moment is going to happen. This is when people are going to go like, holy crap, this really is better than a human driver in 99.99 something percent of cases. And that will be the point where people will just be like, wow, okay, this is this is when it's going to happen. That's my prediction, at least. I don't know exactly when this will be released. I, at a guess, maybe before the end of the year, maybe a little bit earlier than that. That would be nice. Maybe Tesla will try to organize something where they release this software along with uh, doing AI Day 3 at the same time, more or less, so that they are able to talk about how these cars are driving in more detail. Anyway, very, very exciting stuff, and I, I hope at some point I get to do a ride-along with Elon and we can actually look at version 12 and he can show just how good it is while he talks about why f full self-driving is going to be such a profound change. So I know his schedule is insanely busy and obviously I am not an important part of that schedule, but I'm going to hold out hope that maybe something like that will happen sometime soon. Anyway, no matter what, I can't wait to get to use this software myself and see how profoundly different it is. And also because I do research in this area, I can't wait to find out how this works as well. I am super interested to find out the details of how all of this is fit together how it's doing the training, how it's learning, and how much better it can be because of this new architecture. All right, thank you all for joining me in this lovely location. Again, sorry, the clouds got so big. <laughs> it's really cool when there's a little bit of clouds and you can still see the mountains, but you can kind of see what's behind me. Anyway, thank you all for joining me here. Remember to do the liking and subscribing and follow me on X and here and all of that good stuff. Check out the merch store links, all of that, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.